Corporate Finance, Accounts Receivable Management. Our business skills will advance with the use of Corporate Finance, Account Receivable Management. Now, when we're thinking about accounts receivable, we're thinking about a type of industry that has a situation where they typically make sales on account, meaning they make transactions, they make sales in situations where they don't receive cash at that same point in time, but rather they have to put it on account, track the accounts receivable, and then get paid at some future point. Some industries have far less need possibly for an accounts receivable because they might be in an industry where they get paid at the same point in time that their work is done and therefore don't have as much of a need to be tracking the accounts receivable. Other type of industries are in an industry where accounts receivable is necessary and you have to then, of course, track the accounts receivable. When thinking about accounts receivable, then you got to think about, okay, now if I make a sale on account, I haven't gotten paid for it. I want to make sure that I'm going to get paid, hopefully in, at some point in the future, while not injuring the sales. So there's going to be some kind of balance between the credit terms and uh, the number of sales that we're going to have. Do I want to tighten the credit policy or the credit terms so that I'm more likely to get paid by the type of people I'm doing business with, but also less likely to get as high of sales because I'm restricting the people I can do business with? Or do it, would it benefit us to widen uh, the amount of people we do business with dealing with more risky type of situations, possibly having less people that are going to be paying us ultimately on the accounts receivable, but having the sales increase. We got to think about situations like that. Also, we need to think about the situations in terms of what's going to be our cash flow with related to the sales cycle, because the terms of the accounts receivable will result in big differences in cash flows for many types of industries. So if I have a longer period of time in which we allow people to pay us, then we're going to have a longer period of time before we get the actual cash in our cash flow. We would like to shorten that up, of course. But if we tighten that up again, then we're in a situation where we might not be able to deal with as many people and sales would probably go down. So we have these cost benefit analysis there between our cash flow and our sales levels that we need to be considering with regards to the accounts receivable. So we have the credit policy that we would want to consider, which could include things such as the credit standards, the terms of credit, and the collection policy with regards to the accounts receivable with regards to sales that we make on account with regards once again to sales for which we have not yet gotten paid at the point of the sale. We have uh, the termination of credit risk using so in other words, if we're dealing with someone, we make a sale and we didn't get paid at that point in time, but we got some kind of uh, credit terms because they're going to be paying us in the future. We then want to think, is this someone we want to do business with? Is this someone we want to make a sale to? Are they actually going to pay us in the future uh, according to the, to the policies that we have in place? So we might then look at um, prior records of payments, prior records of financial stability, current net worth situation, and then other factors. So if we're talking, it depends on the type of thing that we're selling once again, or the type of service or thing that we are selling to determine how much of a credit policy we're going to use. The tighter our credit policy is, if someone has to jump through a lot of hoops, in other words, in order to make the purchase on account, once again, we'll probably be reducing the amount of sales that we will be making, but we'll be, high, we'll be collecting on a higher amount of them due to the fact that we're more confident that we're dealing with people who are legitimate, who actually want to do a business deal with us and, and, and have the capacity and ability to do so. So that's kind of the trade-off that we have here. Obviously, to look at that, then we can look at prior records. Have they paid in the past? We can look at credit scores and whatnot like that. Prior records of financial stability. So if we're dealing with like other companies or things like that, have they gone bankrupt before? Do they have financial stability uh, for them, the net worth, how much you know, do they have in terms of their net worth assets over liabilities, their balance sheet in essence. So if we, we're dealing with someone that has a solid balance sheet, then, um, then we're probably more you know, in a stronger situation to think that we're going to get paid. We sometimes hear this in terms of the five C's of credit, which is like character, which again, it all basically comes down to trust. So can we, the business, trust the customers that we're dealing with? Obviously, with most customers or most businesses, we don't know the customer personally. If we knew the customer personally, we can make then a, a, a judgment based on that. We don't know the customer personally. We have to use the data to see if we can trust them on a financial level just in general to deal with someone that they don't know. <laughs> and so we're, so we're trying to get the, 
the character then, and we can look at some of these things such as the capa the capital, the capacity. So do they have the capital? Do they have the capacity to pay? What are the conditions that might be in place? There might be certain conditions for the particular arrangement that we are looking at. So we might have a situation where someone looks good, but the particular situation kind of uh, makes it more of a risk or someone looks bad, but the particular situation might uh, might have a change. And there could be situations where we have collateral as well, meaning we're going to support our accounts receivable with some other type of thing that we have recourse if the accounts receivable is not collected. So we might have equipment for a collateral or something like that. So the term of trade, term of trade, the standards for when a company expects to collect has a big impact on the accounts receivable size. So when we're thinking about the accounts receivable, we have to think about it in a same kind of cost benefit analysis as we would with any other type of asset. What if we're going to be holding on to the accounts receivable, if we're going to set up our policies so that we have a larger accounts receivable, are the benefits worth the cost of having that? So obviously when we increase the accounts receivable, we're not getting paid as soon and we're probably dealing with more highly risky types of individuals and the longer the receivable is outstanding, the less likely we're going to be collecting on it. it has to be weighed against the fact that if we do deal with a wider group of people and we have less hurdles to jump through in order to do business with people, then our sales will probably go up. So we got to balance those two things out. We also, of course, once again, have the situation that the higher the accounts receivable, the longer we allow people to hold on to the money before they pay us, then the, our cash flow situation isn't as good. The worse our cash flow situation is because we would like to get paid sooner. And if we can increase our cash flow situation, then we can typically, you know, be more efficient in many other ways, which again could raise the value as well. So to collect sooner, companies often use cash discounts. So then the, the next question, of course, is, well, how important is my cash management strategy here? Do I, is my cash flow important? Do I need that accounts receivable sooner so that I can pay off, for example, if I'm financing the inventory that I purchased, for example? Then I, what I'm trying to do is sell, sales, make sales so that I can take the money and pay off the loan <laughs> that I did to purchase the inventory in the first place, right? So the longer... I have then the loans outstanding or the accounts receivable, I can't use that money to pay off the particular debts and I might have a higher cost in that case. So in some cases then it might be worthwhile to say, okay, I'd like to get paid sooner because I can pay down debt or something like that sooner and it would be worthwhile to do that. So maybe I can incentivize people to pay me sooner by either lowering the terms of credit saying, I want you to pay me within 15 instead of 30 days or we could say, hey, look, I'll, I'll allow you to still pay me in 30 days or even 60 days or whatever. But if you pay me within 10 days, then we'll give you a discount. It's going to be a small discount. Uh, it's just a small discount, but it's a discount. And we'll give you that discount to pay us sooner. Now, that might be worthwhile to do. Once again, there's a cost benefit analysis in terms of will it be worthwhile if we can take that money sooner and, for example, pay down debt or something like that. Will that be worth the cost, which of course is the discount that we have to give to the person that uh, that pays us sooner? So quantitative measures uh, used to assess the credit policy. So when we're thinking about the credit policy, how do we measure these things? How would how could we come up with these determinations? We will, of course, work practice problems on these items. We have the average collection period, which could be used. Accounts receivable over the average daily credit sales. So how long on average does it take us? to get paid on the accounts receivable. The longer it takes us on average to get paid for the accounts receivable, the worse it is generally, because once again, accounts receivable to improve our cash flow is something we would like to get paid sooner on. So if we're getting paid later, you would think it would be more likely that we're not gonna get paid at all because the longer the accounts receivable are outstanding, the less likely we're gonna get paid at all. And we're not getting the money as soon as we, as we otherwise would. Again, that might be beneficial. You might be okay with that if you think that by having that policy, the sales are increased to a level that the, the, co the benefits are outweigh the costs. Ratio of bad debt to credit sales. So we're going to think about the bad debt. Those are the debts where the accounts receivable, they just didn't pay us. They said they were going to pay us. They didn't pay us versus the credit sales. So we're taking a look at the percentage of the, the, the sales that we made that weren't really sales. We did business with people we shouldn't have done business with. So then, of course, again, when you think about that, if that begins, becomes high, we have a lot of bad debt related to the sales. 
then the question is, okay, maybe we should be tightening our credit policy so that we're dealing with people that are more likely to pay us. Uh, or you might, you might say, yeah, the credit, you know, the debt to credit sales are high, but by, by, if we restrict the credit policy, our sales are going to go down a lot. So maybe you might say that it's worth the, the cost of restricting might not be worth, uh, worth the benefit because it, you'll, be taking other people out of the market. So those are the, those are the costs and benefits you got to kind of think of. And then we have the aging of the accounts receivable, which if you've worked in the accounts receivable department, then, or, or somewhere in, a, in an accounting department, it's a standard type of report that you're going to run, which will take your accounts receivable and break it out by how old it is. Is it current? Is it 30 days past due, 60 days past due, 90 days past due? And by taking that kind of analysis, we can then think about how old the accounts receivable are, how much of them are past due and how past due they are. And we can do some type of determination to, to think about the level or, or the quality of our accounts receivable. And once again, we can use that to do some assessment as to how much we think we're going to receive on it. What do we think is going to be a bad debt, for example? And, you know, what can we do to, to improve our credit policy, possibly to get paid sooner and possibly to have less accounts that are more likely to become bad debt? 